on the table. God's going to move in a little different way tonight. Hallelujah. Above all things, have intense and unfailing love for one another. Now, that's within the body of Christ he's talking about there. But, of course, in our own family, it's easy to love your husband or your wife most of the time, if we're honest. For love covers a multitude of sins. You know why? Because sins have been paid for. That's why Christ died on the cross. It's not that you're sweeping it, sweeping it under the rug, no. Christ became sin with those sins, of your sins and my sins. He became sin with our sins, and we have been made righteous with his righteousness. And we have to accept that by faith. People, I know we all struggle in this area, but basically sometimes in our life. You've got to remember that, that you guys are probably a lot further off than a lot of other Christians elsewhere. Believe me, you are. I dealt with two people this week. And uh, every time, don't love themselves, offended by what people have done, rejection, all of those things are there in those people's lives until they can come to receive God's grace and God's mercy and God's loving kindness. Because the Bible says God has power, but God is love, and God covers a multitude of sins because those sins have been paid for at Calvary. Forgiveness and disregard the offenses of others. Oh, that's a, that's a Lulu. That's, that, that'll strain us a little bit. Isn't it amazing that, um, has any husband in here ever said something and your wife took it wrong? Raise your hand. Okay. Very good. I'm very proud of you raising your hands. Vice versa. All right. Isn't that something? The way you take it determines how it'll affect you. If you take it as an offense, then you will let him know real quick. <laughs> but love covers a multitude of offenses. Anybody been offended this week? Raise your hand. One. All right. Last week. All right. The hands will go up. Three weeks ago. <laughs> so what's new? You know what I mean? What's new? <laughs> That's why laughter is so wonderful. Have you ever just really got somebody offend you and you got all by yourself and you, and you, and you do sort of like, God, why did that offend me? You know, well, well, God, that really offended me. You know what I mean? It, it was the sting of death. You know, you felt, ooh, ooh, uh, there's another one over there. Ooh, uh, Pull those darts out. Well, welcome to humanity. That's part of humanity, of getting offended. But, you know, we've learned, and I think we have learned, we don't get offended as much as we used to because I refuse to take the offense anymore. Raise your hand. See, if you take it, you're going down. The devil hands you an offense. Are you going to take it? If you do, you're going down. So don't take, you don't have to, I tell people, you do not have to take everything the devil gives you. And it might be, it might come, it might come uh, to you through your mate, one of your kids, and it comes in all forms. Have you noticed that? You know? So, 
learn how to handle those offenses. Okay? Turn to, I think it's 1 Peter uh, 3.8, I think it is. Let's see. It, let, check me out on that, uh, Willie. 1 Peter 3.8. All right, this is good. Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind. Always remember to beat each other up if anybody offends you. Give them no slack. Hang them if you can. <laughs> stick it to them while you can. Stick it to them before they get a chance to stick it to you. That, that ain't it. Oh, oh, I see. I'm sorry. Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind, united in spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate and courteous, tenderhearted and humble. Wow. If you walk in the spirit, you can do that. You step out of the spirit and you'll be spitting spitballs. Throwing darts at one another. But if you walk in love, walk in the spirit. See, walk in love, that's walking in God. That's walking in the spirit. God is love. When you walk in the spirit, you're walking in love. You're walking in God and God's in charge. But still you have that old nature in us that wants revenge. Why do you think God said, revenge is mine, saith the Lord? Hmm? A lot of people are in jail today because they took revenge. If they'd have just let the Lord handle it, they wouldn't be in jail. Okay? So remember that. If I do something bad to anybody, I want God to deal with me. In fact, if he doesn't deal with me, it shows that that I'm not really his son, that I'm a bastard, but I'm no bastard. I'm a son of God. I want God to deal with me. Now, I used to didn't think that when I was coming up as a young child, you know. I didn't want my dad to find out anything I did wrong. I covered everything with love. I mean, I covered everything with camel, camouflaged everything. All right, look what it says now. Look at that. Hey, tender-hearted, courteous, compassionate. Where do you get all of those good traits? Say from Jesus. See, when Jesus is the master and you let his life operate in you, you can relax. Think for a moment. What difference does it matter a year from now? Two years from now. No difference. And you can... You can grow to that point when you grow in grace and knowledge. It, it's hard to explain because it's spiritual. You just love people. Yeah, you're human. You'll feel the sting, but you don't tear the church down about it or tear your home apart, or do you? No, we've learned not to do that. Because there's times that uh, somebody's going to stick us. Shows you're human. Shows you're still alive. But what do we do? Go to verse, the next verse. Here's what we do. Always return evil for evil. And insult for insult. Scolding. Make sure you scold and lash out at them. And blast them good. Yeah. Have you ever heard seen two people argue? It's awful, isn't it? I mean, bless each other out. Blast each other out. I was, I don't know how I got there. I can't remember those years ago. But I got between this man and woman, and they were throwing insults at one another left and right. 
Man, I mean, she blasted him. He blasted her. Pow, pip, pow, pip. Time out. Boom, boom. Went over my, how, I, I said, Lord, how did I get here? I said, that's enough. Stop. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, stop. You realize what you're all doing? Tearing each other apart. That's what you're doing with your words. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You behave yourself. Listen to this. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. But tell me what your first initial impulse is. Tell me. I'll get you, brother. You wait and see when you're sleeping. When you're sleeping, I'll hit you in the head with the frying pan. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> I've seen that. <laughs> and those are feelings that I'm sure that most of us have. But that gets into trouble. I mean, how can you cook if you bend the frying pan over the man's head? Did you got to think? Let wisdom be there. All right, look. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. Is God talking to anybody tonight? Raise your hand. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Scolding. Tongue lashing, berating, just down, literally. But on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare and happiness and protection and truly pitying and loving them. And they've done evil to you. I guess maybe, <clears throat> how many has ever been put down by somebody in front of certain people and made you and, it, and you felt that it made you so small. How many of you have experienced that besides me? That's a horrible feeling. That's why I always carry my gun. Son, this is the last time you ever going to do that, boy. Pew! Yeah. Then I'm in jail. See how stupid people could be? There's a consequence to everything. Consequence. Tell me what quenches anger. Give me a scripture. Right. Proverbs 15, verse 1. A soft answer. Thank you. A soft answer turns on wrath. Oh, 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 I'm glad you're not. Just check and see if you're awake. A soft answer turneth away wrath. But now when you're all steamed up and you're angry and your emotions have reached a point of boiling, you don't even know who you are. You don't even know your name. How can I think of Proverbs 15.1? All you want to do is what? Blast them, but good. And then afterwards, you, 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 you say, oh, honey, I didn't mean that. <laughs> yeah, but honey, my eye, look at it. I can't see out of it. Did you hear about the, the man that, that, that uh, said something bad to his wife? And I mean, uh, and, and he, didn't, he, he didn't see her for two weeks later. But after two weeks later, he saw her just a little bit out of one eye. <laughs> now, I know I'm using humor in this, but this is the type of message you need a lot of humor in because I'm working on myself and you too. All right. Look at that. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult. There's something in the human element that wants revenge. And once you get revenge, you say, I want justice. <clears throat> uh, wait a minute. Uh, you stand before the judge. How many wants justice? Mm. All right, we got one person. How many wants mercy? Yeah, mercy. <laughs> See, God will do the justice. Always remember that. God will take care of that. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. How many believe that? Very important.
important. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. It's the goodness of God that brings us to repentance. I'm going to say that again. In fact, uh, let me finish this, and we'll put that on the board later so you can hold that. But look at that. Presu uh, oh, that's quick. <laughs> Boy, okay. Or are you so blind as to trifle with the pr and presume upon and despise and unestimate the wealth of his kindness, grace, or mercy, or forbearance, or patience, anything you want to put in there, because it's all covered in grace. Wealth of his kindness and forbearance and long-suffering and patience. Are you unmindful or actually ignorant or the fact that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repent, to change your mind and inner man to accept God's will? I've said this many times. Susan's kindness to me has brought me to repentance. Can you grasp that? God's kindness to me has brought me to repentance. How many understand that to a degree? Okay. That's why when you see all these scriptures that we're covering tonight, that's what it's all about, his kindness, his mercy, his long-suffering. While we, notice this, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. While other people are ugly and act mean to us, we are kind to them. Hello? which will bring them to repentance. Because it's not your goodness, it's God's goodness in you, operating through you, through the gift of the Spirit. See, our intellectual mind cannot conceive that. That's why your mind can be a good, uh, can be a good helper or a good hindrance. Whew, that's powerful. Notice, let's go back to the... Uh, other one in Peter, verse 9. And finish that. 3, three 8. That's good. I like that. First Peter 3, 8. Go to 9 now. We've already covered that one. Never return evil for evil. On and on and on and on. Notice now. Now, and truly pitying and loving, notice this, for know that to this you have been called, that you may yourself inherit a blessing from God. Wow. In other words, when somebody does you evil, you bless them. You bless them. You, we were called to bless. Can everybody see that? Now, what happens is, see, we reap what we sow. If you do evil for evil, what are you going to get back? evil. Do you see that? God's trying to keep us out of trouble. He said, listen, then you this mind, listen, you just bless them. If you render evil back to them, you're going to do, you're going to, you're going to get into a lot of trouble because you're sowing bad seed and you reap what you sow. Can, can, can we understand that? See, that's why it's good to know the Word of God. And you might say, that doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. When you understand what you sow, you reap. And you might not reap it right away, but down the line somewhere, you're going to reap it. Okay? And truly pity and loving them, for know that to this you have been called. You've been called to do what now? Make sure we understand what we've been called to. To do what? Bless. Bless. See? See? But on the contrary, blessings, praying for the welfare praying for their happiness and their protection, and truly pitying, and that's what will happen in your life as you walk in the Spirit. 
You just pitied people that are ugly. I mean, not physically. I mean, ugly in their actions and reactions. <laughs> well, it may go the other way too, but you know. <laughs> don't, don't let I say that. But just understanding that, so many people that I deal with, I dealt with two people this week, they were in bondage. And they think probably half an hour, an hour, I spent, we spent almost two hours with them, close to that, that I can unwind them and uh, just uh, deliver them. To, no, they got some things they got to do. They got to learn the Word of God. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. You got to learn to be obedient to what God says and quit being obedient to what you feel like doing because that's why you in the fix, you in. You understand what I'm saying? Because your old man will lead you into deep trouble. There's millions of people in jail because of they fathered their emotions or they fathered their, their old man desires. Now, make sure we understand what we're talking about. For know that to this you have been called. Called for what? To bless people when they curse you. To bless them when they begin to do all kinds of things to you. You bless them. You bless them. You pray for your enemies. That keeps us clear. Hello, that is what keeps us clear. I want to say that again. That's what keeps us clear. That's what keeps the peace of God in our lives. And you step out of the, uh, and, and, and become disobedient and don't obey the word of God, now you're in trouble. Because you're in Satan's territory now. When you fight back, because the Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood, but against evil spirits, principalities, and powers of darkness. But he says, but our weapons are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds. And so when people say all kind of matter things against you, you don't blab it. You say, Lord, I bless them. Hello? The scripture I have written down here, it says, he who guards his lips guards his soul. He that guards his lips. If you want to know where that's at, that's in Proverbs 13, 3. You don't have to put it on the board. How many has ever, in fact, I've done this this week, said something and the person got offended and you said, God, honey, I, I didn't, oh, honey, I, I wonder who that is. <coughs> I didn't want to mention no names. Oh, I spilled the beans for sure. <laughs> but temporarily, this person <laughs> took it in, took it as an offense. And I thought, gosh, honey, I didn't, I didn't mean to say that. But my lips, see, I didn't guard my lips. Now I'm in trouble. But I thank God she knows the scripture. She didn't return evil for evil. She blessed me. See? And you know, once you get it into your spirit, into your life, and, and let me say this, that's what you become. See, that's what Jesus is. He's love, forgiving, compassionate. That's what we are. Because we're creating the image of God, and that's what the Word does for us as we, as we practice the Word you become good at it. You know why these girls, these Gibbs girls, and some of you women are good cooks? You have practiced that. Man, I come up there and make that cake. I wouldn't even want to look at it. I wouldn't even dare eat it. But look at that. For know that to this you have been called, that you may yourself inherit a blessing. So when you bless others, you reap what you sow. And what did you sow? You sowed a blessing. And you what? Inherit a blessing. Hello? You get what you sow. You sow a blessing, you get a blessing. You sow a curse, you get a curse. And people come to me. What's happening in my life? 
oh man, we got to open this keg of worms and it's, it's a lot you're going to have to learn, honey child, and it can't be done in just one hour and a half. And uh, I'll give you some materials, but I tell you what, you better come back and you better learn and you better get in front of somebody that will bring this thing up and just break down every word. How many is understanding the scriptures now? Because I'm breaking it down word by word. And that's what you got to do. Oh, I could preach all that. Yeah, I can preach that. I'll preach it for you. Now remember, never turn evil for evil. That's your problem, you know. That's what you're doing. That's why you're all messed up. You need to repent and get right. You're not blessing people. You're cursing people. And when you curse people, you curse yourself. There's my sense of Huh? How many like that type of preaching? <laughs> no, you don't preach to saints like that. You teach. Now how many sees this? How many is going to practice this? Oh, boy, that'll be the test. But, see, you're really blessing yourself. When you do something evil to somebody else, what are you doing? Cursing yourself. Well, that gives you a little incentive, doesn't it? Wow. Hallelujah. Notice, you, that you may yourself inherit a blessing from who? From God. God, I want a blessing. Well, start blessing some folks, and I'll bless you. God, I want to be blessed by you. Well, begin to bless my people, Bob, and I will bless you. Woo! Blessings from God Almighty. Wow! Well, my husband, you know, he just won't take out the trash. Bless him. My wife burns the beans every day. Bless her. My wife won't even cook me any beans. Bless her. Yeah, I'll bless her. Go ahead. Because what you're doing... You're hitting yourself in the head. Come on, you go ahead and beat yourself up. Because when you beat her up, you're beating yourself up. Hello? God ain't going to bless that. Then you'll come crying to Pastor Bob, and I'll have to sit back in the office and say, now let's go over this again, okay? All over again. God, listen, you're, you'll inherit a blessing from God that you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection Really to yourself. And to them, but to yourself. To yourself. Can you think of somebody that you'd like to bless them? And bless them. And say it out loud. I bless you. Nah. A little louder. I bless them. Nah. A little louder. I blessed them. A little louder. I blessed them. A little louder. I blessed them in Jesus' name. You just, re you now got, oh, God, oh, oh, his, oh, God, oh, I owe him a blessing. And God's going to bless you. But it may come in many different ways. Many different ways. <sighs> many times I have a husband's and wife sitting with me. And, uh, they blast each other. That's the normal uh, thing, you know. He this, he that, she this, she that. And uh, so I have to vote. And it goes like this. Uh, who's right, Bob? Uh, neither one of them. They're both wrong. Yeah, but. No. See, they're not walking in love. See, the problem here is they're not loving each other. It's me. It's that old song, me. You know the song well, don't we? Me, 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 me. Now that may offend some of you, but is that not the truth? You want deliverance? Get your mind on Jesus and get your mind off yourself. Ooh, 
This was good, but it's getting ugly now, isn't it? <laughs> is that not true? Be honest with yourself. When, when self is in the center and Christ is on the side, you have got problems. And may I just simply say, you want to clear your problems? Shift you from the center? Put Christ in the center. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. When your husband's in the center, oh, oh, he ain't doing this and he ain't doing that. I understand all those feelings, but God says, bless them and you will inherit a blessing. See, it doesn't make sense. It ain't sense. It's faith in what God says when we obey his word. For God looks after his word to perform it. That's why I pray the word of God. That's why I speak the word of God. That's why I preach the word of God. Because God is not going to look after my words that I say. He's going to look after his words and perform it by his power. When I say this, God is working in me, making me willing to do his good pleasure. Hey, God's doing it. I can relax. God is working in me, making me willing to do his good pleasure. See, your faith is in what God says he would do, and he watches over his word to perform it. All right, there's another scripture, James 4. Well, I'm going to go on that, and then we're going to have Frank to come down here after this message and minister peace to everybody, okay? <laughs> because he had a revelation of peace tonight that he literally set us on fire while we were sitting in these chairs, my wife and me. And imparted peace to us, and we saw the beauty of peace, the power of peace, the God of peace. All right, look at this scripture. James chapter 4, verse 6. But he gives us what? More and more grace to put up with our, those that we don't like. Well, you could say that. But he gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit, to meet this evil tendency and all others fully, that when somebody does us wrong, they're going to hear some music. Because I'm going to tell them right off the cuff, you don't mess with this old girl or this old boy because you're going to get it. No, no. Somebody talks like that and they, they think they can uh, sow uh, evil and not reap it back. They're cursing their own selves. Woo! Preach it, Bob. Believe it will. Believe it will. How many sees it? That's the way it works. Now, look what it says. That tendency, the tendency. Anybody have any tendencies in here to, uh, when somebody talks rough to you? I, lo I, lo I lost two teeth when I was 16 years old. Yeah, I walked right into this fist. Because <laughs> I had a tendency, you don't talk to me that way. Well, I reap what I sowed. I lost two teeth. But I messed his hand up. I mean, it was bad. <laughs> you know, I never did find those teeth. But I do have something back here sometimes that just sort of gnaws at my back. I'm not sure, but anyway. All right. We all have tendencies to tell it like it is. Oh, you think you're going to talk to me like that? I'll tell you right now, you ain't going to talk to me like that. I'll put you out there by your dad, out there in the graveyard. You mess with I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Uh, come on, that's what, the way it is. Now, all other tendencies, we all have tendencies.
But what we want to do is change those negative tendencies to positive tendencies and have a tendency to bless. That I might inherit a blessing from God. I doubt I just curse me all you want and I'll bless you and continue to receive the blessings of God. The blessings of God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, boy, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Curse all you want to old brother and old gal, but I'm going to bless you the more. And the more I bless you, the more blessings I get from God. Woo, glory. All right, that is why he says God sets himself against the proud and haughty. Woo, my goodness. But gives grace continuously to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. Isn't that amazing? Gives grace those that are humble enough to receive the grace. Someone says, well, I prayed for grace and didn't get it. Well, maybe you need to meet the condition and humble yourself. Let me tell you something about your pride. Just let it go. Because when you go outside, it'll come back. Just humble yourself. That's right. And when you go down the road, it'll come back. It'll follow you. And you'll probably pick it up again. Just humble yourself. Wow, how do you do that act of the will? Boy, have I had, I've had people in church tell me to go to hell. I said, no, I'm saved. <laughs> the devil don't want no saved person down there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I bless you, devil, bless you, devil, bless you, devil. I get the blessings from God. No, I ain't going to hell. God took care of that for me. Amen. We can shout the victory there. But think, while we were yet sinners, what, look, what, did, what did he do? His kindness, his mercy. When we found out that when we were lost and in our condition of that condition that we inherited from Adam, that's when he died for us. And that's when we are to bless others when they're in their darkness. We know that the devil has blinded them from the glorious light of the gospel. And we bless them. I have, I've had people come up to me and say, uh, Mr. Tilton, out to air base, your life has con 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 uh, convicted me of sin. I want to. I want to get my life to Christ. My very life, my mannerism, my love for people, brought them to conviction, and they wanted to receive Christ. Now that's powerful. Let our light shine so before man. That's powerful. That's powerful. Wow. Frank, would you come down here for a moment? Those who are humble enough to receive it. That's a, how many know that there, there's a secret there? God just told us something. How do you receive grace? Huh? By humbling, humbling, humbling. Yeah, but you don't. Yes, doesn't matter. Humble yourself, and God will impart the grace to you. Tonight, Frank was sitting right here. And I want him to talk a little bit about, because he prayed about peace. And it so moved Susan and me that he actually imparted. And many people are miserable today because they've lost their peace. So Frank, would you just come up and share and just let the Holy Spirit use you in any way possible in this. Okay, you've got it now. All right, well, this was kind of a surprise because... We didn't plan any of this. We just came down and sat here for the prayer meeting. I didn't uh, have my notes and, and have a bunch of scriptures on peace and present them to the Lord. We just, we just started praying, and that's just the direction we went in. The scripture says, follow peace or pursue peace, and that's in your prayers. That's in everything you do. And, you know, if you start praying about something and you get an uneasy feeling, then you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going the wrong way. Or if you're in a business transaction 
And this guy says, look, why don't we take a shortcut here? And all of a sudden, you don't feel peace. You know, you, you have to back up and say, no, that's not the way to go. And, you know, I, I don't know how to explain what went on. It's just we were, we were praying, and that subject came up, and we continued on with that. And right in the middle of it, you know, we were praising the Lord, and we were worshiping the Lord, and it entered into my mind, which is something that we do down here every time we pray. Somebody seems to pick up on it, and my wife and I pray it at home, but right in the middle of all of that, I started praying for the peace of Jerusalem because we've been instructed to do that in Psalms, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And it, it, it's almost like, well, wait a minute, here, you're involved in worship, now all of a sudden you've stopped and you're praying, you know, something altogether different but not different. And I followed the Holy Spirit, I prayed for the peace of Jerusalem, my spirit was not quenched, the Holy Spirit was not quenched, and when I did that, we went right back into praising the Lord. So, it's like, you know, if you're following a person, say in a car, and you're on the interstate, and they take an exit, and you know that's not the right exit, if you take the exit with them, you're not going to end up in the destination that you want to want to go to or you'll have to make some arrangements and and get back on the interstate that's the one thing about peace when you lose peace go back to the last place you had it and then when you feel that peace say now I made a left turn here and that wasn't correct so I want to continue on straight and as long as you continue to have that peace see God said he would give us the peace that passes understanding. Now, you can get bogged down in trying to understand peace, but it surpasses understanding. But I'll give you a little clue. The Prince of Peace, Jesus. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. When you get saved, you get Jesus. You get the Prince of Peace living in you. And it says, pursue peace with men. See, we have peace with God because of what Jesus did. But now we have to maintain peace with men. As much as it depends on you, live at peace. There are some people you can't live at peace with them. So you just have to walk away from them. But as much as depends on you. Now, if you have just that right word you could say because of what they said to you, I mean, it's the perfect comeback. And some of us have to deal with this. I mean, it's, I mean that'll set him straight if I can just say this. And the Holy Spirit says, don't. You're going to get satisfaction from saying it, or you're going to walk in peace. Peace is better. Peace is better. Sometimes you just have to have, you can be going through a struggle and you think you're the only one that goes through this struggle. I'm not going to ask for help because, you know, it's, it's just, but sometimes you just have to have somebody pray for you. One day I was back here and, and the devil was, was just gnawing on me. And Somebody came up, and I said, well, y'all, y'all just keep me in prayer. Well, we'll pray for you now. They prayed for me and broke that thing. Sometimes, like Pastor Bob says, that pride, you just have to put that pride aside and let, let somebody minister to you. And then, you know, that pride will try to, you try to get back in your back pocket. But, uh, you know, but, see, God says that it's the humble that he seeks out, not the proud. 
He resists the proud, and he exalts those that are humble. I don't, I don't know which way you want to go with this. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I think that, that you need to practice the word of God. And if you feel like you've lost your peace or, or you just need to be prayed for, that, that this peace that's passing understanding, maybe you've lost it. It's, we all have at times. I've lost it. You've lost it. So just come up and let Frank pray for you, okay? Just come up right now. Yeah. It's, see, let the pride go and just come on up. Okay. See, I don't want to just pray for you. I want to give you an impartation. There you go. See, my bucket got filled, and I'll throw some of it on you, you know, because I know if I throw it on you, it's just going to get filled again. See, we, we catch rainwater at the house, you know, because the plants, they just smile when you put that rainwater on them. Right. City water's good for drinking, uh, but uh, that rainwater, those plants, they, I, I hear them out there. Oh, oh. You know. you listen, listen and see what, what you hear the plants say when it rains. I mean, you know, they'll be all drooped over and they'll just, but I want to give you an impartation. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, too, that maybe you have peace, but there's situations that you are involved in, and you don't have that peace in that situation. And you need, you need God's peace to keep you calm and collective. So you know what I'm talking about. If you need prayer, come up and let us pray for you. Let Frank impart into you. Impartation is very important, and we see it all through the Scriptures. So just come up, line up here, and let us pray. Yeah, for you, and Frank will pray. All right. RJ, would you come up and stand, and, and Rick and, and Charles, come up and stand behind the folks for us. No, no you can let it go to it ends, I guess. All right, what I, what I want to do, I just want to shake up the dust a little bit. All right, I'm just going to I'm just going to pray over everybody and then uh, we'll go individually. Lord, we thank you now for the peace that passes understanding. We thank you, Lord. No weapon formed against this people will prosper. God, we cast down every imagination that would draw us away from peace. God, sometimes the enemy just gets a hold of our mind. And what do we do? We just yield. And we just follow after what he's trying to tell us. So right now, we take a hold of our own mind. And we speak the word of God to our own mind. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. No weapon. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, and we love not our lives unto death. God, if what we do kills us and we walk in peace, how much better off will we be than if we simply follow after what is not right and stay alive? Absent from the body is present with the Lord. Present with the Lord surely is peace. There's peace. There's no division in heaven. There's no unrest in heaven. There is no turmoil in heaven. And Jesus said to his disciples to pray, Our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, as it is in heaven... I speak for Doris. As it is in heaven, so let it be in the earth. In her earth, in her physical body, in her spirit being, in her soul. Let it be as it is in heaven. God, we thank you now for that impartation of peace. That impartation of peace. God, I thank you now. For that impartation of peace, we break down every barrier that would rob her of peace. Yes, yes, yes. Every barrier, every barrier, depression must go. God, I thank you that she, she is healed. 
by the stripes of Jesus, she is healed. Yes. No weapon formed against her. No weapon. No cancer. No weapon it can, can overtake her. Regardless of what's going on in the physical body, that spirit person is alive and praising you. Praising you forever. Forever. She's been bought with a price. God, this is your vessel. God, this is your vessel. She has surrendered to you completely, 100%. However it goes, however it goes, she glorifies you. Job said, though you slay me. And God, you weren't about to slay Job. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said one thing. He, he knew that his Redeemer lived, and he would see you. He would see you. But Lord... God, I thank you that she shall live and not die. Yes. She shall so declare yes. the works of God. Yes. God, you have called her for a time such as this. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just as Esther went in to the king, knowing it could cost her her life, she went in before the king, and he extended the scepter to her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The scepter has been extended extended yes. and she is accepted in the beloved thank you lord yes. thank you lord god i thank you lord for that impartation of peace that that battling lord god i ask for the spirit of daniel to come on her even as daniel was in the lion's den he was not uh wrenching his hands he was sitting there calmly and when they rolled the stone back the king said daniel has your god delivered you Yes, my king, I've been delivered. The three Hebrew children in the fire, the only thing that was burned off was the ropes that bound them. Yes. Peace. They had peace going into the fire. They had peace coming out of the fire. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All their bonds went up in smoke. Yes. Up in smoke. The yoke was broken. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just breathe in that peace. Just breathe it in. Just breathe in that peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, God. God. Heritage. Heritage. A heritage of peace from your grandmother and your mother. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Even as Paul told Timothy, yes, I recognize it in you, my son Timothy. Yes, it came through your grandmother and through your mother. Heritage, a, a holy, a holy heritage. Peace, peace, my child. Peace from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. She's at peace with all, with all people in as much as it's, it's in her control, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, and she's passing that peace on to her daughter, to the next generation, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Some things we don't want to break. That godly heritage, we don't want to break that. And we see that passing on, passing down, passing down. Blessed are those whose parents are serving you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Peace. Peace. My peace I give you, the Lord said. My peace, not the world's peace. The world's peace is fragile. But God's peace, Jesus' peace, it's, it's enduring, enduring, enduring. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Holy handmaiden. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your handmaiden. Oh, Lord, she sits at your feet, and she takes in the Word of God. She, she, she lives. She lives to hear you speak. Thank you, Lord. Peace, peace, peace. Oh, thank you, Lord, for that impartation now of peace from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. God, the blessing that she's been to many people, you're returning to her. You're returning that blessing a hundredfold. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, you're loosening, you're loosening her tongue to speak, to speak in whatever circle she's in, 
in whatever circle she's in, she reaches out and she extends peace. She extends peace. She extends peace. She lives in peace. She walks in peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that impartation. The impartation, Lord. God, for that, for that holy witness that she is to her children and her grandchildren. Lord, for the concerns that she has for the health of her family. God, she gives that to you. She gives that to you. And she receives from you that assurance that all is well. All is well. All is well with my soul. All is well. Oh, God. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God. God, thank you. Thank you for the presence, Lord. God, she stands in your presence and she worships you. God, and you hear. God, you have her tears in a bottle. Oh, God, you've seen every tear. You've seen every hurt. You know every loss, every loss. But you give her peace. God, the all the loss of the past, she wraps it in a blanket and she gives it to you. She gives it to you, Lord. God, for that impartation, that impartation of peace that no man can break, that no devil can break, disturb oh thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord oh yes lord yes lord yes lord even as mary said when gabriel came be it done unto me according to your word thank you lord thank you lord thank you for that hope that hope yes that hope Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you now. I thank you for that peace, Lord. I thank you for that peace, Lord. God, I thank you that you've taught her. You've taught her in the school of the Spirit. She has received that wisdom from you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We break the power of the enemy that would cause her pain. Oh, thank you, Lord. She has yielded herself to you, and no amount of pain will cause that peace to subside. I speak peace, peace to your physical body. Peace. Manifest yourself, peace. Manifest yourself in healing. Thank you, Lord, for the healing of her jaw, of every part of her body. Thank you for that spirit man that is alive and robust. Alive and robust. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, for that impartation of peace for her family. God, her family walks in peace. Her family abides in peace. No weapon formed against you or your family shall prosper. Thank you, Lord. You speak the word. You have hidden the word in your heart. And God honors that. God honors his word above his name. Hallelujah. 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 Breakthrough. I speak breakthrough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Grace. Abundant grace. Grace upon grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. She's free. She's free. You've given her the desire of her heart. She's free. And no man can put her in bondage. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Spirit of God that is upon her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For the worries, for the worries of the family, we break all worries. Thank you, Lord. 
Shalom. 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 The peace of God. Thank you, Lord. The peace of God that passes all understanding. The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace has been crowned as Lord of Lord and King of Kings in your life. He rules. He reigns. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that freedom. Thank you, Lord. God, I, I, I feel like you're saying to Mike, you're not through. You're not through with Mike. You're just beginning. You're just beginning a new chapter. A new chapter, Lord. A chapter of peace. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just a, a sweeping in every room. In every chamber. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have created in him a new heart. You have created in him a clean heart. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Out of the abundance of the heart, that pure heart, his mouth speaks. His mouth speaks encouragement. His mouth speaks peace. Peace manifests itself in this man. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. God, I bless his coming in and his going out. Lord, uh, surely goodness and mercy shall follow him all the days of his life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. God, I, now I want to pray for you too as one because you are one. God, I thank you now, Lord. I break down that wall of petition division i come against division and i speak peace peace wholeness unity unity is one god they are one male and female you created them but you put them together and you've caused them to become one one flesh one 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 body thank you lord thank you lord god thank you now we relief we release that peace upon them upon their family upon every part of their life. God, they will pursue peace. They will follow after peace. They will desire peace above all things. Lord, thank you now. Thank you for that impartation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The peace that passes understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for Reggie. Thank you, Lord. God, he's a man of God. He's a man who seeks your will. Thank you, Lord. God, I ask you to interweave peace throughout all of him, throughout his, his spirit, his soul, his body. Peace, that impartation of peace. Lord, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He will praise your holy name. He will praise your holy name. And that peace, that peace will be renewed and renewed and renewed and renewed. Thank you, Lord. 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 Many struggles, many struggles, but she's learned to cast them at your feet. She puts them at your feet, Lord, and she doesn't pick them back up. But she takes that peace. She breathes in that peace. She absorbs that peace, the peace that passes understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you now. We thank you, Lord, even as, she, even as she praises you. When she praises you, she'll feel that peace come upon her. It will overshadow her. It will cause imaginations to dissolve. Lord, she will cast down any imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And she will declare that you are God, that you are the Prince of Peace. That you are in control. Thank you, Lord, for that impartation from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. In Jesus' name.
Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you, Lord. Many things, many things affect young people today. But Lord, that, con that cloud of confusion, we break off the cloud of the world, how the world would influence. Lord, I thank you for the foundation that her parents established in her in the Lord. God, I thank you for that firm foundation. She is rooted and grounded in the Word of God. And Lord, she will make right choices. She will make right choices. And she will focus on right things. And she will serve you all the days of her life. She has decided. She has committed herself to you. She has determined in her heart to follow her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. No weapon formed against her. Lord, we break off any curses ten generations back. We break them. And we thank you, Lord, that she is free to choose you. You made Adam and Eve free to make whatever choice they wanted. You've made her free to make whatever choice she wants. But she's decided already to make the right choice, to follow after you. That impartation, Lord, that impartation of peace now upon her, upon future generations, upon her whole family. Oh, Lord, for people that she will meet, for people that she will influence, for people that will influence her. I pray, I pray a hedge of protection over her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if you, if you send her a mate, then we pray for him in advance that he will be what you have called him to be. In Jesus' name. I want to just add in real quick to what Frank's talking about with peace. Peace can go along with your will. See, peace is a choice. You can choose to have peace. See, peace is there. It's not something we just conjure up. Peace is in the atmosphere. It's just like an apple on a tree. Oh, that's a nice apple. And you can look at it and think about it. But unless you go up there and pick that apple, you don't have it. So peace is there, and I'm a living example of that because I'm telling you, growing up, there were times in my life I literally could have killed my brothers and sisters for some of the rebellious, the raucous, the, just the commotion caused in my home over the years, and I didn't want that, and so I'm in the midst of that storm fighting that, but God would always keep me in balance. And I sought after him for peace. I would literally pray, pray, Lord, just keep me happy. Keep me in peace. I would literally pray that as a teenager because I knew the storm wasn't going away in that circumstance. I had to live in that storm for a while, but I went right on through that storm eventually. And it's what, part of what made me what I am now because I chose peace. Instead of war, I chose peace. Thank God he gave me wisdom to choose peace instead of the war. Because they're still fighting the war, and I'm over here swimming in peace. So it's a choice. It's got nothing to do with your circumstance. Remember, circumstance is what it's going to be. Always going to be there. But peace is there for you to choose to live in it. Just as you choose God, you choose Jesus, choose peace. So in wartime, do what you have to in the war, but live in peace right on through it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. <clears throat> Did Jesus speak peace to the storm? Amen. This is what I, the, the sermon I got tonight, that what God is doing here, making us aware of peace and making us aware that we're vessels of peace. And we can speak peace to our children, our grandchildren, people that are 
really disturbed by circumstances or situations, remember we have the peace of God in us where we can impart and speak peace. That's what Frank did tonight. So you might say, well, this is all foolish, you know. And all. No, no, no. One thing about the Jewish people that I've learned, they prayed for their kids. They prayed for their kids, and there's more scientists, more brilliant people in the Jewish race than any of the other races, if you check that out, because their father and mother put them in a hot chair and ministered peace and imparted to them, imparted to them. And when Moses left and Joshua took control of Israel, Moses imparted the authority that he had that was invested in him to Joshua. But see, it's spiritual. But, it's, it's, but you can transfer to others. Bad company corrupts good morals. How does it do that? It's transmitted. That's why we don't want to hang around certain people that's got all this negative and all this stuff because it comes over on you and you know yourself it's been transferred to you and now you're feeling heavy. But see, the positive can be imparted to us. So that's why we want to be people of peace, keep the peace, maintain the peace, and realize that the peace of God passes all human understanding. So you, you know, you, you, you'll be in a situation, and you probably would say, you know, I ought, I ought to be all troubled up about this. But I've got such peace. I don't understand it. That's right. You can't understand it. Because it's supernatural peace. It's peace that comes from the God of peace. And he wants his children to be filled with his peace that we might minister to others. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, praise God for the peace. Amen. Okay, God bless you.